In the previous tutorial, we talked about inheritance as part of object orientation, and we set up our player and our arena as a Space Invaders game. We're now going to add some swarming Space Invaders that will come down the screen and attack Kodu. To make them swarm down the screen in an ordered fashion, we're going to use the path tool. We're going to make a path for the saucers to follow. They will do this for a certain amount of time, and then we will make extra code that allows them to then attack Kodu. So, switching to Kodu, I'm going to use the path tool, which looks like a series of interconnected uh, blobs. When I click, I'm going to click in the very top corner here. When I click, it will leave an object. I can then stretch to put another object in the opposite corner. I'm then going to move down and almost but not quite all the way across. And then down, across, down, all the way to the edge. And I want to make a closed path, so I'm going to move this sphere back over the other one and click to finish that path off. Now I'm still in path tool mode, so it's very important that I now switch to another object so that I don't accidentally make more items on the path. If you do make more items by accident, you can right click on them and then choose delete. Okay, so I have this path and if I press escape to run the game, it is not visible during play. It is only there in the design view so that you can lay out paths for objects to follow. Test this out by using the object tool to add a flying saucer. I'm going to start off and I'm going to object, come down here to saucer. The saucer is a bit on the large side, so I'm going to do a few changes. I'm going to change its size down to about, let's say, a half and escape to come out. And then I'm going to change its height down so that Kodu can actually hit it with some missiles. I'm going to change the height down to about 1. Now, I'm going to program this saucer. So, program. So that always, if I look at more, always it will move by following on the path. And if I press escape to come out and escape to play, you'll see that the saucer is roughly following the path that we laid out. It's moving a little bit too fast to do that accurately, so it will probably help if I go to the saucer and change settings and move down its forward speed multiplier maybe to about 0.3, its forward acceleration down to about 0.5 and you'll see it is now doing a much closer follow of the path that was laid out. Now that we have a single saucer moving around in the path, we are going to learn how to create lots of versions of the saucer, and we're going to use inheritance to give it additional abilities. So we're going to use a, a, a property called createable, and also max created to set up the size of a swarm 
of saucers. It's important for you to understand the difference between a normal object and a creatable object. This saucer here, you notice is glowing yellow. And when I press escape, it appears in the game. And it goes through its programming by following the path. If I right click on this saucer, change settings, and switch on creatable, and I'm going to set max created to a more sensible number, something like 20 is a reasonable amount of saucers to have. Notice it's now glowing green. This means it's a creatable object. When I press escape to start the game, there is no saucer. The creatable is a class. It is a blueprint for how a saucer will operate, but none of these saucers have been created yet in the computer's RAM. So, we will need to have an object that creates the saucers. But first, let's add some additional abilities. So we're going to program our saucers so that with a timer, every five seconds, it will shoot a blip with a random color. And it will do that in the direction towards the player, which would be West. So the saucer will move around in the path. Every now and again it will fire a bullet towards the direction of the player, more or less. Here is the clever bit in terms of abilities that are going to be added for inheritance. After a while, so with a timer, we're going to go for, uh, let's say, 20 and then that's 5 times 4 so let's make it 21 seconds after 21 seconds we're going to switch to another page of instructions we're going to go to page 2 now you can see at the top of the screen here we have page 1 and if I press on right it goes to page 2 which at the moment is empty so after 21 seconds of moving on the path, we want when we see Kodu, we are then going to start to move towards. So we're going to attack Kodu. And obviously, when we bump into Kodu, so when bumped, Kodu we are going to do some combat and cause some damage. The amount of damage will be one point of damage. Okay. The other thing that we want to do is that when we bump into Kodu, uh, we're going to move in here. So when we've bumped Kodu, we also want to combat and boom boom is going to happen to me as in the saucer now as we've said before if we press escape there are no saucers in the game so what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at creating a creatable saucer So we're going to add a blimp object that's going to act as a mothership and that's going to move backwards and forwards at the top of the screen so that's north to south and every four seconds it will create a new saucer one which is our inherited saucer with extra abilities so i'm going to use the object tool i'm going to create 
is blimp. That blimp is off the screen, so I'm just going to let me see it a little bit better. And I'm going to change the height of it. To be about one and a half maybe. I'm going to change the rotation so that it's at 90 degrees and facing across the way. And I'm going to program it so that All right, uh, always it's going to move and we're going to limit that movement to north-south. Then we're going to switch on a timer and every four seconds we're going to go to actions and we're going to create now with create, normally we would only be able to use the objects that exist, but we also now have creatables. Creatables includes any creatable object that we made using inheritance. So our saucer one can be created every four seconds. If I press play now, Actually, I'll just fix my camera angle so that we can see what's happening with the blimp. So I will uh, go to the hand tool and I will move things down a little bit. And then escape. And then after four seconds, our blimp has popped out a flying saucer. They are starting to fire missiles towards Kodu at the bottom of the screen. And after 20 seconds, they then start to attack Kodu by bumping into him, which causes him damage, but also destroys them.